Hi, everyone. Today, I'm going to share how a funny little project on a cozy Saturday morning led me and my husband to uncover insights into a significant global challenge in AI. By the end of this talk, you'll see how moments of creativity and play can spark solutions to problems that affect us all. Picture this. It's a Saturday morning at our co-working space in London, which is totally empty. Danny, whom you might know as Pi Danny, and I are a bit crazy to be coding after a busy week, but we're excited to be venturing into AI, and there's a tutorial we can't wait to do. Our five-year-old daughter is patiently coloring next to us. We're diving into our colleague Nathan Cooper's unreleased guide on training small language models with synthetic data. To keep ourselves entertained, we decide we're going to train a small language model to be a humorous onion article generator. To get there, we must first create a large data set of synthetic satirical news articles, parodies of the news. As we progress, we apply Nathan's lessons on improving the quality and diversity of synthetic data. We add a feedback loop and the news articles become increasingly hilarious. See, what you're, see for yourself what I mean in our live demo. We find ourselves lost in literally enjoying every new row of our data set as it's generated. We had meant to do bulk data generation using Nathan's new fast data library, but we end up becoming the human meat puppet rate limiters for the highly creative LLM instead. We can't help it but stop to consume each funny article as it comes out. Our daughter's thoroughly amused and confused about us laughing, kind of like a data scientist would be if they saw a bulk generate data function being called over and over artisanally by hand with the num rows of one. I'll admit it started out not generating great quality humor writing at first. The code was pretty simple, as you can see. This was the first iteration of writing a function to analyze humor and see if it's actually funny. Now, imagine you're writing a function that's supposed to rate the humor of a piece of content, and you discover that the function itself wants to make jokes too. LLMs are so weird. Here, the joke's pretty awful. Why, why don't neural networks have midlife crises? Yeah. Um, where it gets interesting is in the return JSON from this function call. Notice how highly the joke is rated. That's a joke in itself. Reading the explanation, you realize the entire JSON response is a big joke. AI concepts such as activation functions and midlife crises. What? AI engineers may not experience midlife crises in the same way humans do? What are you talking about, you weird function? OK, I get it. Analyze AI joke returns a totally satirical analysis of an AI joke. Writing that made it obviously clear that the parity generating pipeline requires two agents, a writer and an editor. They have to be separate so they don't influence each other. This was the feedback loop Danny and I generated, uh, ended up with after a lot of coding, where we used personas and, and topics as, and an LLM to generate a seed parody. Then we rate its quality. If it passes the quality filter, we save it. We rank the set of surviving parodies, grab a top one at random, and we feed it into the main parody generator as an example. The full parity pipeline Danny and I pair programmed on starts with this foundation, a Python class with attributes for all the parity inputs and outputs. We use two-step population of attributes, first from generation of the instance and then from critique of how good the article is. In our pipeline, as SQLite does, does a ton for us, letting us tap into some ridiculously powerful tools. I mean, it used to be the toy database for learning web dev, kind of like the training wheels of databases. But now it's being used in all kinds of wild ways, like running right in your browser. Another key part of our data generation pipeline is function or tool calling, like, we, um, 
we see here uh, is a function that allows that LLMs can use like tools. And the best part is that tool functions can spit out structured data neatly organized into fields instead of just dumping out long text blobs. Structured output is perfect for dropping into databases, keeping our data neat. So when an LLM writes, it can sound like bland AI-generated spam. But toss in some personas for the LLM to role play as, and suddenly the articles have flavor. They start to sound real. They can be authors, interviewees, you name it. Meet Persona Hub. It's a data set of 200,000 fun and wildly diverse fictional personas. Um, the sample persona I show is a software engineer. Shocking, I know. I really went out on a limb there. But hey, we've got badminton players, maternal health advocates, people from different countries. Beyond that, you can get the persona of your persona's child, their child's pediatrician, or even their child's pediatrician's pet therapist, anyone in the infinite graph of fictional people. Circling back to our pipeline, we generate a parody using a persona role-playing as the author. And to filter for quality, our editor AI agent steps in as the comedy critic. So what do we do with these quality ratings? Well, we, we, uh, here's a simplified function showing how we incorporate the past parodies, including their ratings, into the feedback loop. You can see how the prompt starts with an example before the instructions. In other words, we iteratively improve the parodies in our database with each round of generation. Now, to actually publish this site, Danny and I used fast HTML, which, like Django, can easily build websites with data. Here, HTML is generated using highly efficient Python functions with zero templating, an approach used often in the functional programming world. Fast HTML is optimized not just for efficiency, but for AI in every way possible. For example, on the Fast HTML team, we've been prioritizing server-side events and WebSockets, which make all the difference for creating snappy AI chatbot UIs and real-time data updates. Do parodies matter? In this case, I will say they matter because they made us happy and they were, they were the perfect learning situation um, to get us to engage with the material. That said, as I was experimenting, it hit me. The pipeline we made was basically how sophisticated news generators could, in theory, work. This is dual-use technology. It's like encryption, which could be used for good or bad. We'd accidentally reverse-engineered the whole machinery of the underground fake news industry and expanding this to a real-world scalable system, I hesitated showing you this, but the same architecture can be used in AI for good projects. Here's an example of using it to improve adult literacy for diverse populations. Now, here again is the demo in case you missed it at first. Go ahead, take a picture. Um, it, if for nothing else, it might be fun to read the articles in your room tonight might be better than watching TV. And, but my hope is that it inspires you to think a bit creatively as AI engineers and other, other tech people. <laughs> um, so let's rethink what we're building with AI. Uh, sometimes the tiny personal apps inspire other tiny apps that save humanity. Thank you.